Welcome to the Sky at Night magazine podcast, your monthly dose of astronomy on demand. a dark night, if you go out for say 30 minutes, you might be able to see a handful of meteors or shooting stars. Now they're the result of tiny flecks of space dust and dirt entering our atmosphere. Now I've actually got a piece of space rock that's fallen to earth here known as a meteorite in Kerry. If you feel the weight of that, it's mostly made of metal, wow. iron and nickel. Now you can imagine if something that size, several centimetres across, came in through the atmosphere, you'd really notice it. But your average meteor, your average shooting star, is really only the size of a grain of sand when it comes through the atmosphere. Well, meteors glow and create these beautiful shooting stars because of what happens when they hit the Earth's atmosphere. Most of them, in the Leonids for example, are travelling at something like 71 kilometres a second when they slam into our atmosphere. And what happens when they do that is that the air ahead of them gets compressed violently and heats up. It's just like when you're pumping up your tyre on your bike. If you pump for a long time, the air inside the pump gets compressed and it heats up as well and you can actually feel that. Well, ahead of the meteor, this heat builds up and begins to vaporise the meteor itself and it begins to glow. And that's what we see when we look up and see a beautiful shooting star. Well, the Leonids is an example of a meteor shower. Now, meteor showers happen because as comets pass through the solar system, they leave these great trails of dusty debris around the place. And as the Earth goes around its orbit, it passes through those dusty trails and creates the meteor shower that we see on Earth. Well, the best time to look will actually be before dawn on the 17th of November, when it's nice and dark so you see some shooting stars, as well as the evening of the 17th of November into the early hours of the 18th of November. And hopefully you should see some good Leonids during these times. Well, if you just look up in the night sky on the evening of the 17th of November, there's a good chance you'll see a handful of meteors anyway coming from the Leonid meteor shower. Now, most of the meteors you'd see on the night of the peak will be coming from the direction of a point in the constellation of Leo. Now, that point is known as the Radiant, and it's the Radiant which gives the meteor shower its name, the Leonids. But actually, you don't want to look straight in that direction towards the Radiant. You probably want to look about 45 degrees either side. <laughs> Well, it really all depends on what happens on the night. If we pass through a particularly dense patch of the cometary dusty uh, tail that's been left by Comet Temple Tuttle, we might see an awful lot. Some astronomers are predicting a couple of hundred per hour, which is certainly um, a good show. But even if you go out on a, on a clear night from a reasonable location that doesn't have too much light pollution, you might be able to see a handful every few minutes. If you have a digital camera like this DSLR here and a fairly standard photographic tripod, you might actually be able to take a picture of a Leonid meteor. What you need to do is set the camera up looking at as big a patch of sky as possible and take exposures of around a minute in length at a high ISO number, so 800 or 1600. And when you download the images, you might find that you've actually captured the streak of a Leonid going across the frame. If you do capture any Leonids and you take some really nice pictures, send them in to hotshots at skyatnightmagazine.com. So all we need now are some cloud-free skies to see the Leonid Meteor Shower, but hopefully we'll get a good view. Don't forget to pick up a copy of November's Sky at Night magazine this month. We've got everything you need in there to find out when and where to look for the Leonids, as well as all sorts of other astronomical events. So good luck and clear skies.